Hi, my name is Tom Van Lan. I'm the president of CoAid, developers of such products as Caesar 2, PV Elite, and the CADWORK suite of plant design products. A short time ago at our 2009 CoAid user conference held in September of 2009, I presented a keynote speech where I spoke about what we most stand for, integration, collaboration, artificial intelligence, and automation, and how those items can really help you to improve your productivity, especially in the difficult times we face ahead. As part of that presentation, I, with the help of my colleagues, John Brindley and Chris Schiller, presented what we called the CoAid 20-Minute Challenge, where we demonstrated how these capabilities, how these features, how this intelligence, integration, and collaboration could actually be put to work. Since that time, we have met, had many people, either who attended that presentation or who heard about it afterwards, who have requested videos of that presentation. Since we didn't make one at the time, we've decided to recreate that 20-minute challenge in the studio. But first, a few words about what we're trying to do. For nearly 15 years, CoAid has stood for integration and collaboration through information sharing. This, we believe, can make you and your company more productive. Why and how? First, there's the enter once, use many times model. Why should every discipline have to recreate the model when we can generate it from one? For example, from the 3D plant model, send it out to the stress analysis, pressure vessel analysis, structural steel, etc. Likewise, if we could do something like that, we could ensure that all models are accurate if they are all created automatically and intelligently from the same source model. If we can update all changes immediately, this assures that there's concurrent engineering. All disciplines are working from the same, most up-to-date model. And if we can do seamless revisions, sending information back and forth very quickly, then this assures that not only can we do acceptable design, but we can take a few additional moments to do optimal design. And if we maintain concurrent engineering throughout the project life, or pro project design life, then that means that there are fewer as-building requirements to be picked up after turnover to the client. What does that mean? It means that all of these features will save you and your client money, thus ensuring that you will win more bids. How do we do this specifically? We have implemented a number of bi-directional, seamless, intelligent uh, interfaces between our products. For example, between CADWorks and Caesar II, our stress analysis product, between CADWorks and PV Elite, our pressure vessel analysis product, and onto PV Fabricator and back to CADWorks Plant. Likewise, between CADWorks PNID and CADWorks Plant, we have found that we can easily, seamlessly, bi-directionally share the data and do this. And most importantly is we adhere to an open database, thus ensuring that you can integrate our products with your downstream and upstream processes on the project. But really what I want to say is enough talk. Everybody talks about this. Everybody wants it. Everybody says they have it or will have it. But I believe it's time for some action. So we have made a challenge here, which we're going to try to accomplish, again, with the help of my colleagues, John Brindley playing the piping designer, Chris Schiller playing the pressure vessel engineer, and I will play the, uh, besides your host and MC, the pipe stress analyst. We are going to complete a project. We're going to complete this skid in 20 minutes. We're going to complete pipe routing that may not be yet done. We're going to do the engineering analyses on these. For example, the stress analysis on the critical lines and the pressure vessel analysis on the critical vessels. Once we have done that, we're going to produce the deliverables, the stress isometrics, the piping fabrication drawings, and the pressure vessel fabrication drawings as well. And if any changes are going to be made in the engineering or the design stage, the most important thing is we are going to maintain concurrent engineering. And of course, what would a project be without client review and a sign off? So we will end with that. Our challenge, as I said, is 20 minutes. The beauty of what we'll have is sharing information, it will be collaboration, we will be working on different machines, passing data from one to the other in order to accomplish this. So enough talk, let's see some action. With the help of my colleagues, John Brindley as a piping designer, Chris Schiller as the uh, pressure vessel engineer and myself as a pipe stress engineer, we're going to do the uh, 
collaboration, integration, artificial intelligence, and general automation. First, uh, we'll have to set our clocks. This is a 20-minute challenge. Uh, why don't we switch over to John's machine? Ready? Three, two, one, go. Okay. John is going to complete the uh, pipe routing on the skid here. And the question is, what pipes still need to be routed? And he can find out quite easily by doing a, an audit or consistency check between the PNID and the 3D model. This will tell him what has been placed in the model that's not in the PNID or what's in the PNID that's not in the model. And here he sees it's 8-inch ASD 613 line that needs to be run. So he has to route that. The question is, where might that be? And by calling up that line in the 3D model and doing an isolation, he can see very easily that's this line that comes out of the nozzle from the heat exchanger. So he's going to route that line. In order to do that in CAD works, you have to define the line number, the spec, the size, etc. Quickest way to do that here, and most accurate, is to pull that data directly from the PNID. By selecting that line from the PNID, you can see that all of that information got set immediately and accurately. So he's going to run this line, and the quickest way to do that in CADWorks plant is by using a routing line. He's going to build the poly line here from the uh, nozzle to the edge of the skid. And once he's built that poly line, because he has the size and spec and line number set, he can quickly turn that into piping. So he sets here, routes the pipe. Now the pipe is routed, and we know that the data in the 3D model will match perfectly with the uh, PNID once we do the next consistency check. But now he might have to look for inline components, such as valves. And by selecting that line number, he can see in red that there's a valve that's yet to be placed. Question is, where should that valve be placed? He can go to the PNID view very quickly and see that it should be between that nozzle and the edge of the skid. So he's going to place that. He has to get all the information associated with it, the spec, the type, the long description, the short description, pulls that from the PNID so we know it matches again, automatically generates the top works that should go with it, and places the flange, and he's done. So now all pipe has been routed that needs to be, and we can turn to look at what needs to be engineered. In this case, we're going to assume the critical line is this line coming from the bottom of the tower to the suction of the pumps. By hovering over it, he sees that it's line 607, 608, and 609. So we want to send that out and have that done by the Caesar II analyst, who will be me. What's the quickest way to construct that model? You could do it by hand, or if you have CADWorks plant, you can immediately send it out, either selecting component or by line number from the database, and create instantly, as you see, a native Caesar II file. No intermediate files, no other operations to do. So now we come over to me, the pipe stress engineer. And things are getting a little serious, so I'm going to put on my thinking cap and my glasses here. And John tells me that as a stress engineer, he's created this model for me. I see right off it looks basically correct. And if you send that over from CADWorks, obviously you see that we should have saved you a lot of that time. Let's take a look here and see what it did for us. We've got a numbering system that makes sense, 10, 20, 30, 40, etc. We come in to here. I take a look. My material came directly from the CADWorks spec. My weights and lengths for the rigid elements came from the CADWorks data file, so we know they match. If I look at my other components, such as my T's and fittings, welding T, that looks good. Generally, we try to create a perfect model without any warnings or errors. The only thing that the stress engineer typically has to do is add the stress, allowable stress in the code information. Once that's done, we can go ahead and run, and we can, the stress engineer can now spend the time doing what they do best, which is evaluating the analysis and solving any problem if there is one. So let's see what the Caesar II analysis did for us. Uh, we're running short of time here, so um, hopefully it came out okay. Okay, there's our output. Let's take a look. Sustained and expansion stress, that's normally what we look at as a stress analyst. Sustained point of view passed, we're one out of two. We're looking good here. Expansion failed. So I've got to make a change before we can okay this. Uh, let's go into Caesar 2's output graphics to try to get a sense 
of what's causing the problem here. If I look at this in this view, I can show my overstresses, for example. I see I've got a highly stressed area right here in this particular leg. And if we show our displacement, which is what causes expansion stresses, I see what the problem is. We're getting a lot of growth along this run, inadequate flexibility here, thus overstress problem. What do I have to do as a stress engineer? I have to put a expansion loop in this particular run. So let's go back into the input now and uh, look at building an expansion loop. Okay, here's my uh, model. I want to put an expansion loop in this area, but generally as a stress analyst, I have to know where to do it. This would mean going out to the field and doing a walk down or going to my designer and asking him to share his models and drawings to show me what's in the vicinity in terms of clearance, in terms of uh, uh, steel to attach to. But now, because of the fact that all of our products are fully integrated, we can bring simply the plant design model into the engineering environment. And I can see immediately what I have to work with, clear area, steel, et cetera. So let's take a look at this skid and say, I want to build in this area. Let me put a loop. But I've got to figure out how to make that loop. And that usually involves trial and error. Except now, in Caesar 2, we have a feature called the loop wizard, which automates this with artificial intelligence. So I'm going to come to my loop wizard, tell it I'd like to solve the expansion case. I'd like to maybe maximize the stress in my system at 260 megapascals. That's a bit below the allowable. I can tell it what type of loop I'd like, or Caesar 2 will pick the most economical and safe one. I can pick my uh, height to width ratio. And finally, I can draw the cube on the screen or basically show Caesar 2 where I have space to draw this model. So I can select my area. I don't want to hit or go into that vessel. So I take a look, draw right up to here. That looks good. And then I ask Caesar 2 to design or recommend the loop for me. This is part of a movement that we've worked towards in the past couple of years of putting our domain knowledge or our artificial intelligence into the products. In the past, this has been more of a validation tool. Today, we realize that a lot of experience has been leaving the industry over the last five years and expected to do so over the next five to ten. So we feel it's our responsibility to help the younger engineers who are very intelligent, very well educated, but may not have the experience to solve these problems. So for a younger engineer, here's how to solve an expansion problem. For an older engineer like myself, if nothing else, it saves me time. So what does Caesar 2 recommend to me? Once it comes up with a recommendation, It'll give me the, uh, basically the economics of what it recommended. Here it says 4,300 millimeters, four bends. It shows me what it lays out. Here's the old, here's the new. And if I think that looks reasonable, let's go ahead and run. If I don't like it, simply hit the undo button, try again, different configuration. So let's validate this suggestion and see what happens here. run the analysis, we're targeting a 260 megapascal expansion stress level. And let's see what Caesar 2 gives us. Sustained and expansion stress. Look at the results. Sustained passes, that's great. Expansion stress, 260 megapascals, perfect, we pass. Okay, so at this point I've got an acceptable, good design, and I want to, again, maintain concurrent engineering by sending it over to John. How do I do that now? It used to be I'd draw up a sketch and say, can you please make this change? And maybe he'd make it and maybe he wouldn't. Now I say, I've got a Caesar II model that I made some changes to. And he can bring that in automatically, very quickly. He can get a sense right off the bat due to the skeleton of what changes were made. If he likes it, he can go and convert this model to the same style as what he has in the drawing. And it will come across looking as though it were built by a designer, in fact, by John himself, okay, rather than by a stress engineer. But we offer this ability, because we can send it back and forth so quickly, to optimize, do better than acceptable. He saw here that it makes more sense to stretch this a few millimeters over the center of that steel and maybe place a support. So using the simple AutoCAD stretch command, he brought it over the center of that steel. By using CADWorks plants, new uh, support modeler, 
He's going to enter or include a model A support. He'll pick the, uh, he has many to choose from, literally an infinite number of supports can be modeled. He's picking a rod, uh, saddle, uh, plate, assembly, and of course these are interfaceable with Caesar too. He made a little change here, so what's he want to do? He wants to make sure everything's still okay, and to do that he's going to send it back out to Caesar 2. Select by line number, 789, and send it back out to, and send it back out to Caesar 2. Okay, and there it is. Back to me. So what do I know? I know that a change was made. Let's go in, open this, uh, come back into the Caesar 2 program, and see immediately what were the changes if I bring my plant model back in. I can see that yes, I am now over that steel, and I can see that yes, there is a restraint in there. Those changes were made, so let's go and verify whether this is acceptable or not. So I've got to do a quick run here and make sure that everything works. And this is really the advantage, or one of the advantages that we can't stress enough of this integration. The ability to improve, to optimize, to do what ifs. Try something, send it back and forth a matter of minutes to see if we can do a better, more efficient design. Let's take a look at the results here and still validate that the new layout is adequate. Sustain and expansion stress, passes, and passes. That looks good. So now we've got to start talking deliverables. We've got a uh, analytical package or this line that's been stress analyzed and we want to send this out, create our deliverable, which is going to be the stress isometric for somebody like me, stress engineer. And Caesar 2 has a built-in stress isometric module which allows us to annotate whatever we wish. For example, I might want node numbers. Okay. And we have the ability to annotate anything from the input or the output module. Uh, rigid weights of, of uh, valves and flanges, for example. Restraint types, uh, allowable stresses, diameters, anything. Likewise, from the output, we can select output from any of the load cases. I might want restraint loads from the operating case, for example, and we can place those. Once you've decided what you want to annotate, we can go ahead and create this isometric automatically using isogen. Okay. Um, you can create your own templates, of course, uh, any style you wish. And once we see this, we've created the isometric. Let's pop up the is isometric and take a look. Simple AutoCAD drawing. And if we look here, what do we have? There's our isometric and annotated as we specified, node numbers, restraint loads, rigid weights, any other information you want, which you know is correct, direct out of the Caesar 2 model. Okay, now we're gonna send that over to John. Um, John, I basically, that, that line is okay, so why don't you create your deliverable on this, which would be a fabrication isometric. Uh, he can do this using isogen uh, from CADWorks, either in a batch mode or an interactive mode. Here he selects line number and sends it out. And what do we see here? We see the nozzle information, the equipment information, the supports, the coordinates, bill of materials, total tagging. That fast, he's created his deliverable. So now what's next? We have to look at the pressure vessel analysis. And like with CADWorks and Caesar II, CADWorks and PV Elite share the same type of interface. So he can very quickly select this vessel send it out and create a PV Elite uh, model as well, which we'll now hand over to Chris, our pressure vessel engineer. Okay, Chris, why don't you open and see what's available. John just created this E101, and you take a look here. That looks appropriate, it looks good, but of course, as the engineer responsible, he should go through and make sure that everything looks right on the various components, materials, etc. And at this point, he can make changes, either ones that he wants to do voluntarily, for example, that elliptical head to a flat head. Maybe he can tell uh, PV Elite to use its artificial intelligence, domain knowledge to make recommended changes. For example, there, he told it to, if it fails for external pressure, uh, add rings automatically. 
Once he's specified what he would like the program to do, he can go through and do the analysis and see what happens. Now at this point, we have a failure due to external pressure, so we know some modification is going to have to be done. And if he comes through and looks at the failures, failure due to external pressure, okay, so hopefully PV Elite offers us some suggestion here. There it says that it modified it. Would you like to accept the new changes? Let's take a look at what those changes might be. And as you see here, it did go ahead and add those rings. So now we've got a pressure vessel that's passed its analysis, that's acceptable with our engineer, and at this point, he has to produce his deliverable, which is a fabrication drawing. And to do this, he's going to use our new product, PV Fabricator. And PV Fabricator is uh, basically inter, uh, interfaces with PV Elite and CADWORKS equipment. He can open a file from either one of those and semi-automatedly create a uh, fabrication drawing. In this case, our template asks for an elevation and a plan drawing. We could do sections as well. He's going to uh, convert those to 2D drawings. Now, these 2D drawings are still intelligent, so if a change is made in the 3D model, you can update automatically from there. At the time he creates the 2D model, as you see, it also creates the bill of material and the nozzle schedule. But what's a bill of material without tagging? So let's see how fast Chris can put the tagging up on there. Selects the elevation, there's our tagging. Selects the plan, there's our tagging for that one. What's next? Dimensioning. So let's go ahead and put dimensioning on this drawing and see what we can do. Uh, he's selected the components he wants to mention. Now he's going to select the nozzles. And as quick as that, he's got uh, dimensioning. Now he wants to add some details, weld details, nozzle details, etc. And this is basically a block manager. So if you have blocks that you use already, you can use them in our product as well. We don't force you to change your process or your company standards. Here are maybe some weld details, etc., notes, whatever you have. Okay, how's that look? That looks pretty good. I think we can sign off on that. Let's go ahead and turn over that deliverable. And now, concurrent engineering, send it back to John. What John needs to do now is he's got to update his model to reflect those changes. So he goes and he brings in the PV Elite model. We see the changes made immediately, the flat head and the uh, rings. Once he saves that, what happens to everybody working on the model? Everybody working on the model should get a notification which tells them there's been a change. And by reloading the XREF, everybody is working on the same model. Concurrent engineering, very important. Okay, at this point, we've got plenty of time for the client to review and sign off. We're going to give the client a full two minutes and four seconds to review this. So in order to do this, we're going to use uh, one of our newer products, CADWORKS Design Review, which is used for walkthrough, visualization, even presentations by your sales department to prospects. So let's bring up CADWORKS Design Review and open our model. And what this does is not only give visualization, 3D visualization, walkthrough, fly-through, animations, everything else, but it gives you full access to all of the data that's in the CADWORKS model as well. So as we go through, as questions arise, and why don't we begin the walkthrough here? He can query the data. For example, what's that valve? What's that pipeline? What's that pump information? What's that piece of steel? What's that vessel? Walk, why don't you walk through, we'll take a look at that vessel, the changes, the rings that were brought in, the change to the piping system. And at this point, your client can go in, do operability studies, uh, look at anything. No longer do you need to produce the drawings to get the sign off. Okay, so at that point, it looks pretty good. We finished with 45 seconds to spare. So I'd like to say thank you for the time you've invested in watching this. We really appreciate this. And what I'd really like to say is, look at the 20-minute challenge you just saw here. Can your software do that? And if not, why not? If you would like to try this in your own office, 
feel free to contact us and get a copy or valuation copy of our software to see yourself. Or come to one of our discovery tours. We typically visit 20 to 25 countries around the world every year to bring this sort of solution to you. Thank you. Thank you.